my name is Jessica Trudell and I ran for election in 2014, so it's my second time running for election. I'm very committed to the community and helping it uh, become a better place. I sit on uh, various boards and committees. I'm on the uh, Museum Advisory Board. I'm on the board for the Silver League Writers Guild, which I also founded. Um, so I'm a really big supporter of the arts. Um, I've also sat on boards uh, for economic development related activities. Um, and uh, I, I was employed with Northern College for a while, and uh, I was also employed with Clear Logic, who was working on the Timmins 2020 strategic plan at the time, so I have a lot of background knowledge um, from those experiences. And uh, ultimately, my, my goal with running for council is to um, help make the community a better place to work, live, and play, as people have a habit of saying. Um, and I'm running in Ward 4 because that's where I live, I live in, in Connaught. Um, and I went to school at Northern College, um, and so I had various connections uh, to that end of town. And I really want to make sure that uh, the entire community is thriving together. I was born in Timmins. I've lived here most of my life. I have uh, moved away and lived in other communities. Uh, I lived in Sault Ste. Marie, I lived in St. Catharines, I lived in Ottawa. So I've uh, lived in enough different places to kind of have a good feel of different um, sizes and population styles and, and whatnot. Uh, that and, but I've lived here for most of my life and uh, I moved around mainly for, for family reasons, not by choice and uh, when I became an adult I, uh, I moved back because it was always just felt like home. But last time I mean, I was uh, pretty naive um, and inexperienced and so I, I knew I probably wasn't going to be elected just based on the fact that I, I didn't have money for advertising and I didn't really know how to run a campaign so it was more kind of feeling it out at the time. Um, and I wanted to kind of see how far my name alone got me because I did I did have good connections with the, within the community because of the boards and committees that I was on and the various projects that I was involved in. Um, so I didn't do any advertising um, and I just kind of wanted to see how far my name got me. Um, and the good thing is, is that the number of votes I got kind of lined up with what I thought I was going to get, which means you know I was having you know good genuine conversations with people who people said they were going to vote for me, you know really did vote for me. Um, which, uh, which is really important to me because I really want to have genuine conversations with people. That's really what's, what I'm about, is about um, getting people's feedback and hearing what they have to say. Um, and so this time, going into it, I, I had no idea last time um, how important it was to knock on doors. It just it didn't even occur to me that people were out there doing that. No one ever knocked on my door, um, so I had, I didn't, it didn't even occur to me that that was happening. Um, but that is an extremely important part of campaigning, especially the grassroots campaigning. So I'm going to be doing that, a lot of that um, this year. And uh, I, don't, I don't believe I'm going to be spending a lot of money on advertising again this time, because I don't, I don't really want to buy votes. I more or less want to uh, earn them through those genuine conversations, whether it's on Facebook or face-to-face -face or um, at a meeting or at an event that we're both attending, whatever it might be. So that's, that's what my plan is this time around. One thing that's really important to me is um, focusing on essential services. So I understand that there are um, things that we want to have um, in order to improve the quality of life of Timmins and to attract new residents. Um, and I want to have those things too. Um, but I think right now what we need to do is we need to focus on what we need more than, than what we want. You know, what we need to do is we need to clean up that lake. What we need to do is we need to get our taxes under control, we need to fix our infrastructure. Um, we need a lot of things that um, all those wants aren't going to get us right now. So even though I want to think long term, I want to you know, foster uh, community development, I want to foster economic development, you don't need to spend a lot of money to do those things, uh, contrary to popular belief. Uh, there is you know, a lot of uh, really cost effective ways to foster those things. Um, and so I really want to focus on um, putting our budget on essential services and finding creative solutions um, for the wants, um, which I have a lot of really good ideas um, and, I'm, and I'm really good at listening to other people and hearing their ideas because I know there's a lot of really great ideas out there in the community. Um, so I really want to have that kind of open door policy with the community. So that's another thing I'm going to bring to the table. And in terms of like other aspects of my platform, I really want to combat um, the housing crisis. Um, as a real estate agent, I see um, a lot of, of issues in terms of, of uh, housing issues 
whether it's um, tenants living in terrible situations or um, homeowners who are trying to better their lives, but they, they literally have no money left over to improve their homes, um, mortgaged up to their eyeballs. You know, and, and then just the, the lack of housing stock. People are trying to find a house that suits them, and it just doesn't exist. It's not available because our housing stock is limited. Um, and we're not really moving up with the trends in housing. We have so many options out there. Um, there's so many micro-housing options that are becoming very popular in other areas, but for some reason, Tim is lagging behind. So I really want to um, really find creative solutions to our housing problems. Um, and that also means also addressing homelessness. That's a huge part of my platform as well. We have a humongous homelessness issue in Timmins, and I want to address that. I also want to look at beautification, uh, community art. Um, there's a lot of things we can do there. Um, I want to uh, look at our uh, the staffing at City, City Hall and maybe look at doing a hiring freeze or um, look at ways that we can creatively maybe, um, I know there's union issues involved, but I really want to look at you know, creative ways that maybe people can job share or otherwise make better use of people's time um, so that we don't necessarily need to have so many um, employees um, at City Hall that are you know, being paid with tax dollars. I know it's a contentious issue, but I want to look at it. I'm not saying, hey, let's start firing people. I'm saying, let's, let's look at it. Let's see if the, uh, if the operational plan that they developed recently made, you know, they made some good points. So let's let's see what those options are. And Port Five Lake is a huge concern for me, and I know it's a huge concern for people in Ward uh, in Ward Four where I'm running. Um, we really need to start cleaning that up and stop. We've got to stop waiting, waiting and waiting and putting it off and, and waiting for someone to tell us we have to do it. Let's just do it and not wait for someone to tell us that we have to. Stars and Thunder is a good idea in theory, um, but Almost everybody I speak to wants to see changes to it. Nobody wants to see us not have any fun. Nobody wants to see us not have festivals in Timmins. That's not what this is about. It's about how are we running it. Are we running it efficiently? Are we running it with the right dollars? Um, I don't think so. Not with taxpayer dollars. I don't think so. Um, so I really, I'd like to see Stars and Thunder continue, but I'd like to see it um, changed significantly in how it's run, uh, in terms of how long it is, how it's funded. Um, who runs it, how it's organized. There's so many changes that can be made to make it better and more successful so that we can actually have um, all of our festivals uh, be successful. Uh, I've been against it from the, ever since it, it morphed from being a, um, a, a true multi-use facility with um, rinks and, and whatnot. Now it's, it's really just a pool with some meeting rooms and a running deck. Um, it's not what it was supposed to be when we first started down this road. Um, and what we what we really need to do is consolidate our facilities. We have too many facilities all over the place and it's too hard to manage them all. They're all aging, they all need maintenance. The purpose of it was to consolidate some of those facilities and we're not doing that. So I don't support it as it is. Um, if we can find a way, there's communities all over that have um, developed multi-use facilities that have done it at way less of a cost than it's quoted to us. So I would really like to look at, you know, how can we develop the multi-use facility we originally set out to do um, in a more cost-effective way. We need to talk to these other communities and find out what they did because they did it at a much more economical cost than what we were quoted. We don't, we don't need $150 million to do it, not according to the facilities that have been developed in other communities. There are ways that that community groups can run various aspects of city life. Um, and people are already doing it, like the Knopp Community Center. It is run by the Knopp Community Association. The, the city owns the building, but the Knopp Community Association does all of the fundraising, does all of the management. They basically handle everything without costing anything to the city, to the taxpayers. And there's, uh, you've got the, the off-leash park, very similar situation. Um, there's so many ways that community groups can take over um, facilities and, and programs and activities, um, but the issue is that you know city employees then means that city employees don't need to do those jobs anymore. So then we worry about you know city employees being you know fired and things like that. So uh, people don't want to talk about that because it's it's a tough thing to talk about. I don't want people to lose their jobs. I don't. But there's no reason why we can't have taking over some of these programs and some of these facilities 
and making them run even better than what the city is currently doing. So I really want to look at those options because there are some really amazing community groups in this, in this city that are doing awesome things on city property. Um, and I want to, to see more of that happen because then we save taxpayers money and have really passionate people making sure that these activities are, are taking place. It's just the city can't be everywhere and do everything. It's impossible. So we need to look at those options, and that's one of the things I want to do. You see the photos. Um, if you're not in Ward 4, and if you live in Ward 4, then you see it and smell it with, with your own senses. Like, it's, I don't know how we let it get this far. I don't, I really don't understand. I mean, that, the Porcupine Lake and, and Bob's Lake and all, like, those are community assets. Like, there's a beach there that we could be using, but, I mean, it, it does get used, but at, at, the risk, but at the person's risk that's using it. So I, I don't know why we are wanting to spend, what is it, $48 million, $58 million on an aquatic center when we have lakes. We have lakes people can swim in, theoretically, if they weren't filled with sewage. So I just, I would like to really start cleaning that up because that's a huge community asset that we're essentially losing and all of those properties surrounding it that have so much potential and so much value are losing their value and it's just not fair. I think that I'm pretty transparent. I'm very active online. I like to, I'm not afraid to have a conversation. Um, and when, I'm, when I put a question out there or I put an idea out there, it's because I want feedback. It's not because I think I'm brilliant and that this idea is is the best and it cannot be improved in any way. It's the exact opposite. It's this is this rough idea in my head and I really want people's input because I think that um, making a community better is a collaborative effort and there's so many different perspectives out there that you can't possibly consider because you're just you. You can't think of from everybody else's viewpoint. So um, I think that's my biggest strength that I bring to the table that I'm a, I'm a good listener that I really genuinely want people's input and that I'm not afraid to change my mind if somebody makes a good point that makes me realize I was wrong. That does happen. Um, and I think that there's just no room for arrogance um, or ignorance on city council. There's just no room for it. Um, and I, I want to see that, that whole uh, attitude obliterated. I think Ward 4 is ready for a change. Um, and it's not necessarily, like, I'm, like it's, it's not about pointing fingers and this person's doing this, this wrong. I think it's just a matter of you need fresh eyes, you need someone with passion and drive that works really hard. Um, and like, I, I don't stop. I just, I work all the time. You can ask anybody who knows me. I am a little energized with money all the time. Um, and I really love this community. And I just, I, I think that anybody who really knows me knows that I need to be around that city council table for the better of the community. And that's, it sounds arrogant, but it's, it's not. It's just me honestly thinking that we need people who really care, who are passionate, and, and strong-willed enough to stand up and be able to debate around that table, but open-minded enough to be able to admit when they're wrong. That is what's wrong with politics today. And that is what I want to fix, and I think that's what I'm, I'm capable of saying. I, I majored in English, so most people, when I told them that's what I was doing, they were like, what are you going to do with an English major? Um, and what I did is I became an entrepreneur. I started my own business. I built it from the ground up. Um, and I mean, I think in my first year, I multiplied my business by 500% just through hard work and making phone calls and, um, and just talking to people. And so I think that, uh, that the notion that jobs, the only jobs available are mining is completely false. I mean, I can't remember how long ago it was, but uh, Timmins uh, made the you know, list of most entrepreneurial cities in Ontario, and, and pretty high up on that list compared to other North Ontario uh, communities. We have an, an amazing entrepreneurial community in Timmins, and because of that, we have all of these spin-off industries that, yeah, perhaps started with mining, but now it's, it doesn't rely solely on mining. Whenever the mining fluctuates, 
tend to bounce back, bounce back. So I think when it comes to economic development, we really need to support our small businesses and our medium-sized businesses. Yeah, we want to support the mines. We want those large corporate businesses to stay. Um, but in the end, 98% of people are employed with small to medium-sized businesses. So we really need to cut the red tape. We need to make it easier for people to open businesses, easier for people to stay in business. Um, and we need to make it easier for people to come to Timmins to establish their business. Another important part of my platform is going through our bylaws and getting rid of the things that are just that are just there as an annoyance. You know, not just for businesses, but also for homeowners. Um, there are way too many ways that um, we are being bogged down by rules that aren't really necessary, that perhaps are a bit of a cash grab by the city. Um, I, I really want to go through those bylaws and clean them up because we've accumulated so many and I don't, I don't believe all of them are necessary. I was at a council meeting, uh, not just this past week, but one before that, um, and the, I was taking notes and the first thing I wrote down was rambling, I think, was what I wrote down. And there was a, like, city council meetings do not need to be five, six hours long. It, I don't remember them being that long with the last city council. They were not that long. Um, and the problem is, is that people that are sitting around the table, I don't think they they realize they're doing it, but they kind of go off topic, or they say something five or six times, and they already kind of made that point, but they're saying it over and over again because they think they're emphasizing it. But all you do is when you say it over and over again is you make everyone around you fall asleep, and they're, they're not getting the point. They're, it's quite the opposite. Um, so I really think that and to have efficient meetings and to have people really pay attention, not just people who are in the room, but all of the people that are hopefully watching it live or watching it the next day, all the, the community members, instead of putting them to sleep, let's let's make our point one time, let someone else make their point. You don't need to come back and make your point again because somebody else countered your point. That's not how this works. Like Everybody is smart enough to hear what you said, hear what somebody else said, and still remember what you said. So let's just let's just make our point once. Let's not ramble. Let's not get angry. Let's not talk over each other. Let's let's just have the meeting in a um, collegial and collaborative way. Let's share our ideas um, and let's not feel like we have to fight with one another. As an entrepreneur, I run two businesses. I'm always on call for my clients. I'm constantly being, I mean, even just now, you might have heard my phone went off, I'm getting a text as we speak, and there's there's always somebody who needs to talk to you about something, and I make myself available for them. Um, and if I'm not available, you know, I do have family commitments, I do have other things, then I just say I'm not available right now, can you email me the info and I'll get back to you later. Um, it's not that difficult to manage all of that information coming at you at once if you have a system. And as an entrepreneur, I have a system that works for me, that helps me make sure that I'm keeping on top of everything. Um, and you just have to really enjoy talking to people, you know, like when I, when I started in the real estate business, one of the first conversations I had um, with another agent was, um, you're going to get tired of talking to people all the time, like the, the people are so annoying, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel that way, people aren't annoying, people have ideas and thoughts and they want to talk to you, and, and all you have to do is listen, and it's not as difficult as to be. So yes, I'm very prepared for time commitment. Um, I've already blocked off my Tuesday nights, um, and and yeah, I, I'm I'm willing to listen to everybody that um, wants to talk to me, and uh, and I'm I'm perfectly capable of knowing when to say when to say no and when to make myself available. It's just it's balance, and any entrepreneur should know how to do.